Uh, hi, year 10. So it is period, of, oh, what period is it on Wednesday? It's period five on Wednesday. Um, so as ever, there are four starter questions there. So ideally, you'd print those out, have a go. But of course, you could just do them in the back of your blue book if you don't have a printer there. Um, I'd like you to pause here, please. Um, have a go at those yourselves, and then you can check them on the video. OK. So a uh, little equation to solve here. This is really sort of an exercise in bid mass, making sure you do things at the right time. Um, I'm going to start, I'm going to change that color. I'm going to start here by expanding these brackets. Remember that you expand the brackets before you multiply, so before you add. So that'll be six minus three X. And I'm going to collect some terms. I'm actually going to add that five as well. So I've got, I've got this eight, but I've also got that plus five over here, so I've got 13. And I'm going to times both sides by six. Um, and I'm going to get 78 minus 18x. I'm going to add that 18x. And therefore, x is 78 over 19. I don't know what 78 over 19 is, but it's non-calculator as... Uh, per the logo, so it doesn't matter. I can leave it as a fraction. Ah, right. So a fraction division question, non-calculator. We can all type things into our calculator. Um, have a go at this one. So I'm going to make it uh, top-heavy first. So I've got two times five, and I've got fifths, and I've got ten of them there, and three there. So I've got thirteen fifths divided by five quarters which is 13 fifths times four fifths. So I keep that one, switch the sign, flip the fraction. Uh, 13 times four is 52 over 25. Times across the top, times across the bottom. There is no opportunity here for cancelling. Uh, right, a third question. Um, I know we're not great at thirds. This is actually a recent GCSE question. All thirds questions are, of course, non-calculator. Uh, so part A, we've got square root three. We can simplify this root 12. So I've got square root three plus two square root three. And if I've got one there and I've got two there, I've got three altogether. Okay. Uh, this is an interesting one. So I've got one over square root three to the power of seven. Now I'm going to just write some of these out. I'm going to write them out so we get a feel for it. Three, four, five, oh, five, six, seven of those. So every pair, root three times root three makes three. So I've got another three there, another three. There. So what I've actually got there is 1 over 3 times 3 times 3 is 27. 27 square root 3. Now, I want to leave it like this. So I need to rationalise the denominator. And the way you rationalise the denominator where there's a third just on its own there is you times the top and bottom by that third. Because that will give you square root 3 on the top. And then you've still got this 27, but that root three times that root three is actually three. So you end up with the square root of three over 81, and it's in this form. Okay, and then the last one here, this is a bit like the one we had um, recently. Um, I'm gonna rewrite it as two lots of the square root of x squared. Bear in mind the square root of x squared is x minus 11 square root x plus 12. Well, this actually looks like a quadratic, something squared, something numbers. I'm going to let y equal the square root of x. And that will mean I've got 2y squared minus 11y plus 12, at which point, reducing PSF,
I made a mistake there. Apologies. It's not not two y there, is it? It's just y. Sorry, that's y minus four. So but y equals four, we've got y equals three over two. But y is root x. So if we go back to x, we'd have to square both sides. X equals 16, X equals 9 over 4. Okay, okay. All right, so that's a start. So we're going to carry on with some circle theorems. Um, now, yesterday, of course, we were talking about the um, circle theorem where the, let's just clear that space. Circle theorems from the lesson on, sorry, on Monday was, there's the center. From any two points to the circumference is x from the same points to the center makes 2x so we had that one and we also had there's a part of my diagrams are not of good quality from any two points on circumference go anywhere you like let's say i get a straight line to that because it's so bad anywhere you like create an angle at circumference x now as long as you go from the same two points anywhere around the outside here you go anyway you like you get x also bear in mind it doesn't work down here now someone pointed out in the lesson on monday why didn't you label the other ones i.e that one well actually if you consider these two points you create this angle here and you create that angle there. So actually these points are also the same as each other. They're just not the same as the X. Um, so they are the two theorems we did last time. So we're gonna build on that with the third theorem now. If you draw a line through the center, i.e. a diameter, if you join that diameter up anywhere on the circumference, literally anywhere, so I've gone there, but I could have gone anywhere here or anywhere over here, the angle you create by doing so is 90 degrees. And I'm going to prove that one to you, and you can use the, uh, the blank sheet with the circles on to get that proof down, because you do need to be able to do geometric proofs, and this is a geometric proof. So I'm going to show you how this can work. What I'm going to do, just make it clear that's the centre of the circle. I'm going to draw another line there. Okay. And then I'm going to label one of the angles somewhere, let's say here, x. So let this angle be x. So when you have a proof, you've got, to, you've got to be able to justify every step. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to, lay, I'm going to put some corners on here so as I can refer to the angles. Right, if that's true, then angle C O B C is also x. And that must be true because an isosceles triangle has two equal angles. I'm going to write two equal base angles. Okay, so that's the next. Right, well, that must be then COB. That must be 180 minus 2x because we know there's 180 degrees in a triangle. And if that's 180 minus 2x, then that change of color, that one. AOB must be 180 minus bracket 180 minus 2x. And if we expand that bracket, we get 180 minus 180 plus 2x, which is 2x. And you've got a reason there. That's because there's 180 degrees on a straight line. So that is 2x. Well, then these angles must be the same, so I saw these. Let's go for um, OBA. 
that must be 180 minus 2x over 2 because there are um, there's 180 degrees in a triangle I'm going to put the arrow there and also an isosceles triangle has two equal base angles 180 minus 2x over 2 is actually 90 minus x so that angle is 90 minus x so in the end therefore angle a b c is 90 minus x plus the other x that's the total of this angle here which equals 90 degrees so i have proved there that this corner is always 90 degrees but it's based on the line going through the center because that's how we got all the isosceles triangles okay so we've proved the third theorem the fourth theorem then the fourth theorem is that opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180 degrees now i want to be really clear on this a cyclic quadrilateral is a circle drawn inside sorry it's a quadrilateral drawn inside a circle but where all the corners touch the circumference so every corner is touching a circumference there and what we're saying on this theorem is that if you pick let's call that a b c and d the theorem says it must be true that A plus C, i.e. the opposite ones, they actually add up to 180. And likewise, B plus D is 180 as well. And that's not obvious. The only thing that was obvious before we started is that A plus B plus C plus D is 360 because it's quadrilateral. But we didn't know about these pairs. And I'm going to prove that one to you as well and get that down because we need the proofs. For these theorems so i'm going to draw myself another generic cyclic quadrilateral so it's touching all the corners and i'm going to start with any corner let's say this one and i'm going to work out something about this one over here and i'm going to do that by putting in some other lines. Oh, I wanted a different color for that. I'm going to pop a line in there. And there. And using some theorems I've already written, let me just write some A, B, that's the center, C, D. Right, so I've started with let angle A, B, C equal A. Therefore, angle AOC, but actually I want, yeah, that's correct. AOC is 2A, because we know that angles created in the center are twice that created at circumference. So I'm gonna write that down. Um, right, if that's 2A, then that must be 360 minus 2A. So I'm going to call that one. Therefore, that's also AOC, but I'm going to refer to it being the larger angle with this bit of notation here. Um, so that was equal to 2A. This is equal to 360 minus 2A because of course there's 360 degrees around a point. And then whereas when that was the circumference, that was the center. If you're looking in this direction, this is the center, this is the circumference. So this angle down here is half the angle at the center. So therefore, angle ADC is half of 360 minus 2A, which is 180 minus A. And remember, 
I'm going to write the reason for that. That's the same reason as I had earlier. That tells me that therefore angle ABC plus angle ADC is A plus 180 minus A, which is 180. And so any opposite pair on the cyclic quadrilateral add up to 180. So we've got those two theorems written down. Here they are, and they need to go in your notes. They're printed, they're on the note sheet that's got the three examples as well. And I'm going to just run through those examples. It's essential here that we can not only answer the questions, but that we give the reason at every step along the way, which can be a bit tedious, but um, communication is essential and you will lose all the marks if you don't do it. So I'm calculating G. So I'm going to start, I'm going to put some reference points. Right, I know that angle ABC is 180 minus 22, which is 58, because there's 180 degrees on a straight line. And then I immediately know that angle G is 58 uh, not 58, sorry, is at 180 minus 58 because opposite angles in a cyclic quadrilateral add to 180. There we go, there's a reason. And that will equal um, 122 degrees. Now, what if I were doing lots of questions like you guys are going to do a few, I would label this reason something like star one. And then every time I needed to refer to this reason, I would put star one in a bracket to save me writing down the same thing over and over again. So that's a way you can do a shortcut, even though you do need to do it. Um, you need to put the reasons in. OK, next one here. Well, the easiest thing I can see here, let me put some reference points on, which I might need. Um, I immediately know that H, there's one cyclic quadrilateral here, the one that touches all the corners, all the way to the corners. Remember this one in the middle here is not cyclic because that is not a corner. So H must be 180 minus 110, which is 70. And then I'm going to write opposite angles. Actually, I'm not going to write that. I'm going to just put star one because I put that as a reference on the last one. I know that K, K is in the center. And then from the same two points, H is at circumference. So K is two lots of 70, which is 140. Because angles at the center are twice that at the circumference. So I've got my two answers, 70 and 140. And then the last one before I get you to do some questions is this one. Various, um, there's actually various methods of doing it. One thing I can see, which is perhaps not super obvious, is that from these two points in the corner, I can go to the center and I can create N. Or I can go all the way to the corner and create 32. That tells me N is double 32. Because angles at the center are twice that at the circumference. Now, I've got that one is 64. Now, I know it's an isosceles triangle because it's made of radii. So M must be 180 minus 64 divided by 2. Um, and 180 minus 64 is 116 divided by 2 is 58. And that's because there's 180 degrees in the triangle. And because an isosceles triangle 
has two equal base angles. So they're both 58. Right, I've got P over here. Now, what I know about P for sure is that um, I've got this diameter going through here. And I've joined each side of that diameter to the edge of the circle. And that means that is 90 degrees. Let me put some reference points on here. It must be true that angle ADC is 90 because angles at the circumference of a semicircle are 90 degrees. And it's a semicircle, of course, because the diameter splits it into two equal semicircles. Um, and it's um, it's a 90, but of course, I've got these labels here, which tell me it's an isosceles triangles. And that tells me that P must be 180 minus 90 over 2, which is 45. And that is for exactly these two reasons here, that one and that one. And so I've got both answers there. So you need those full solutions, please, including the writing in the on the sheet and your example, um, which needs to be stuck into your notes. Uh, and then we need to do the questions from the blue book here at the front of your blue book. Okay, I'm going to stop the video there.